Hi, I'm Jeff Everhart, a developer advocate with WP Engine. In this crash course, we're gonna build a simple headless WordPress app with React and WP GraphQL. It'd be ideal if you have at least a good understanding of React fundamentals and also GraphQL fundamentals coming into this course. But the best part is, is that all of the tools we'll need for today's course run inside your browser, so there's no need to install anything before we get started. Let's get coding. The first thing I'll do is open up the code sandbox that we've prepared for this course, and you can get that link below this video to get started. With that open, I'll start by giving you just a quick overview of the code sandbox that we'll be using, and then walk us through the different parts of our React application. If you've never used code sandbox before, it should hopefully be pretty familiar. Over here on the right hand side, we have this finder window where we can explore the project's file structure. In this center pane, we have our code editing window where we can view our open code files, edit and save them. Over here on the right, we have an output pane where as you make pro changes to your project, this will update automatically and show us our application. And then over here on the left, you'll see the dependencies that we've already added to this code sandbox as a part of the course. So before digging into how to connect this application with WordPress, let's look at the application as it stands right now. We can see from our output pane that we have this blog page with a title right here, and that here we have this sort of masonry style gallery laid out for us with different cards with data that's being displayed on each card. Things like the post title, a date, an author, and if the post has a featured image that will be displayed there as well but we can also click into each one of these cards and view a post details page, where we get the, the title of the post, the author again, the date, similar stuff that we had on our initial card, but we also get the post content and any of the images that are installed in that content. We can click back and forth between those and navigate, and you can see that as we do that, it's also changing the URL up here in our, in our browser URL bar. So let's look behind the scenes and see how we're making that happen. I have our app.js file open, which is really the root of our application uh, for the most part, and what we'll be doing some work in later. And we can see here that we're importing React, then we're importing some packages from React Router to do our routing. Um, but then we have these two files, home page and post page, and then some styles as well with them. And here, this is doing the bulk of the work, our routing down here, where we're looking at the particular paths that are in the browser, and then rendering or displaying particular components based on that path. So that sort of forms the, the basis of our navigation between our post, our home page, which displays a list of posts, and our post page, which displays a post details. You can see that as we change those URLs, the component being displayed changes. So now let's take a look at each one of those pages um, up here in our pages directory. If we open up home page, for example, uh, we can see that this also actually reaches out and uses another component called post list, so we'll open that up as well. And this is actually the component that is going to fetch our data to display this list. Uh, and we're doing that right now from this dummy data.posts export. And so if we come over here to the dummy data.posts.js file, if we open that, we can see that we've got an export there that is just giving us essentially a JSON object, a JavaScript object back in a particular shape. And that shape is the shape of the file or the data that we would expect back from GraphQL. So let's hop back into post lists and take a look at what is going on here, right? So we can see that we're importing that data from there. So the first thing that we'll want to do to make our application dynamic is replace some of this code with code that would call out to a GraphQL server. And so there are a few different methods for interacting with GraphQL servers, but the method that we'll be using in this tutorial will involve a package called Apollo Client, and then we will implement an Apollo Provider pattern to wrap our application inside of code that can provide us access to Apollo Client so that we can use the use query hook throughout our React components. So to start off that process, we'll come back into our source folder and we'll create another folder inside of that called lib. Now this is just a convention where we can then create additional files and sometimes these files may be service objects that are associated with a library like Apollo we're using. So we'll call this next file apollo.js, save that out, 
And then inside of Apollo.js, we're going to want to open up an import statement and import two things. So the first one is we'll import an object called Apollo client. Second one is in memory cache. And both of these are gonna come from the Apollo client library. And then what we'll do down here is we'll create a new variable called client and then set that equal to a new Apollo client instance. And that new Apollo client object is gonna take a configuration object and one of those properties is going to be a URI, which is the URL to the GraphQL server that we're gonna be querying. And then the second property is a cache property. We'll go ahead and configure this one right now by creating a new in-memory cache. And what that allows you to do is when we implement this in-memory cache, we are essentially creating a cache inside of your React application. So when you make queries to GraphQL, the cache will remember those queries. And so if you make the same query again, it will try and store as much as it possibly can in memory so that you're not having to actually make that query. Um, so we've done that. And then the uh, URL that we'll be using for our GraphQL server, it's going to be HTTPS. We'll do demo.wp graphql.com and then slash graphql is gonna be our endpoint. And now if you have a WordPress server already somewhere and you have an instance of WP GraphQL installed on that and you wanna use that, that's totally up to you. Uh, but this is what we'll be using for this tutorial. So we'll go ahead and save that file out. And then we'll wanna come down here and then we'll also want to export uh, default and then client so that we can make sure that our client variable up here is exported for use in other files. After configuring our client, what we'll wanna do is actually implement an Apollo provider component at the root of our application. And what this allows us to do is to use the use query hook uh, throughout our React component so that we can do our data fetching inside of each component. So to accomplish that, we'll open up our app.js file, and then up here, we'll open up another import statement. And so from, we'll want to import Apollo provider. Um, we'll import that from Apollo client, just like we have before. And then we will also want to import the client that we just configured um, inside of lib. So dot slash lib and then Apollo, and we will import our client, okay? Because we're gonna need both of these to make this connection. So what we'll do now is we have this switch component here with our routes inside of it, and that's essentially the component that's responsible for handling our routing and displaying those page components. And so what we're gonna do is we're going to actually wrap that switch component inside of this Apollo provider component. Um, we'll do that, and then we'll just indent this to make it all look nice. And then so that allows, that basically says that anywhere inside of here, we can get access to this Apollo client. And that, then that uh, allows us to use the use query hook, which we'll do in a second. So we've wrapped Apollo provider around our switch component. And we will also need to actually provide uh, a property to that Apollo provider component. And that property is the client that we configured in the last step. So we have this Apollo provider component that wraps our, our UI element um, and allows us to do that. And we'll come over here and just click refresh. Okay, and so after I've saved that out, sometimes you, sometimes you can refresh this. Um, you can see that a second ago it wasn't rendering um, and it might need a second to catch up. So you can click refresh in this browser window. And sometimes if that doesn't work, you can also just go ahead and click, click refresh on the entire code sandbox and we'll sort of have saved your progress and we'll uh, retranspile and compile this uh, render preview. So those are good tips if you kind of get stuck as we're going through this tutorial, um, just to keep in mind, but everything is good for us to proceed on to our next step. So we have Apollo provider configured, and now that means that we're able to use the use query hook uh, in our different components. So let's go ahead and use that inside of our first page component, which uh, is home page. And then we also know that home page basically just displays this post list. So really, if we open up components uh, post list.js, that's where we're doing the bulk of our data fetching. Um, so the first thing that we'll want to do is we'll go ahead and open up an import statement. 
And then we're gonna to wanna to import a few things. So the first one is gonna be GQL, uh, which is a package we'll talk about in a second. And the second one it, we've mentioned already, but we haven't used yet is use query. Uh, and both of those things are gonna come from Apollo client. Um, and then we'll implement them down here. But before we do that, let's hop back and look at the second part of this equation, right? So we're making a connection between our React application and a WP GraphQL server using Apollo client. So we have the Apollo client piece figured out. So next, let's take a look at uh, the WP GraphQL server that we'll be querying. Um, and we know that we configured that URL in lib slash Apollo. So I'll open that up. We'll just copy this into our clipboard. And then I'm going to open up an online uh, graphical IDE instance. Um, and there will be a link down below to the, in the tutorial video to this. And big shout out to uh, the open source community per, for providing this. It's a fantastic resource as we're about to see here. So what this will allow us to do is take the GraphQL thing we copied in our clipboard uh, and go ahead and copy that. And then we click this button in here to enter the graphical IDE. And what that's going to do is it's going to use that GraphQL endpoint and it's going to make a request to it to essentially interrogate the schema of that GraphQL database. What that means is it's going to look at all of the different items and types of things and nodes and edges it says that it should have, and it's going to make that available in our Query Explorer down here. So from here, what we'll be able to do is use this graphical IDE, this interface, to visually construct our query, run it against our test WP GraphQL database, and then copy that for use in our React application. So to get started, the first thing that we'll wanna do is let's hop back into our application and go into our dummy data folder. So we know that the first thing that we're gonna replace is this list of posts. So let's just take a second and look at the shape of that data and what fields are on that. So we can see here that at the root, we've got this data uh, that's an object with a, a post property that's another object. And then we get down to nodes and we get an array of, of this type of object, right? So our, an array of our posts. You can see that there, it's got that type name right there. So on this, we can see we've got database ID, title, date, slug, link, um, some information about the author, and then featured image. And so what we'll want to do is in our graphical IDE, we'll essentially want to replicate this data structure uh, as a part of that query so that when we swap it out and get information from our live WordPress database, it is shaped the same as it is in our dummy data. To begin constructing our query to get all posts, we can come down here on this left-hand menu and let's scroll down until we see posts with a plural and then open up that menu. And as we do that, in this center pane, uh, Graphical will begin constructing a GraphQL query for us uh, using visual output. So this is a very handy tool. So inside of here, we'll open up nodes, which will allow us to get the fields uh, that we want on, on that particular, on our posts. So we know from looking at our test data, uh, if we open up our dummy data, that we need some specific things. And so we'll come over here and say database ID, title, date, slug. Uh, we need those things. So we've got database ID, uh, then maybe we want the title. We know we said we want this slug. Um, let's hop back in there, slug, date, featured image. Okay, so we also, we're gonna get some information about the author. So we'll click down into the author in those nodes and we'll get the author's name. Then we also know that on the post itself, we want the featured image. And then we want alt text if it's there and source URL, yeah, source URL. All right, so nodes, database ID, title, slug, author with the name, featured image, okay, and let's go ahead and run that. And when we do, we'll see that we get some of this uh, data back from our live WordPress install. And so that really is a great way to preview your results, to see if the query contains all of the fields that you'll need to construct the subsequent interfaces. But once we're good with that, and let's just double check that that's all we need. Uh, database title, state, slug, author. I don't think we need the link for this um, with their name and then a featured image if there is one. All right, so that looks good. So what we'll do now is just copy this query um, and then we'll hop back into our code sandbox and come back into our post list component. And now that we're back in here, we can actually, we'll use this GQL package that we imported a second ago to begin formatting this query. So to get that started, we'll go ahead and declare a new constant variable. 
I'm going to call that get all posts. And I'm just going to make that uh, all caps so that I can remind myself that that's a query. And that's just kind of a convention that some people use and that I like to do. Um, and so what we'll do from there is take the query that we created in our graphical IDE and paste that inside of those back ticks. And I'll just come back through and just reformat that a little bit so that it's a little bit more readable. We'll go ahead and give that a save. So that's how we format our GraphQL queries for use with the use query hook or Apollo client in general. And there will be a little bit more involved when we have uh, variables in the next step. But what we'll do now is we'll actually implement that query. And so we'll come down here inside of our post list component and delete those two lines. And then we'll declare a new variable and we'll actually just reinitialize those. Um, but we're going to do some destructuring here. So we're going to create a loading variable, an error variable, and a data variable from uh, the response we get from use query. Okay, so we'll use query and then we'll go ahead and pass that to get all posts function. And we can see that as we do, it will update uh, in real time to reflect those changes. Um, and so that all looks great. And this is also worth mentioning that this is how use query works, right? It's gonna return us an object with a few different properties, the loading, the error, and the data. Um, and so if it's loading, you know, we return this loading posts. If it's an error, we return a separate message. And then down here from the data, we check whether or not the posts array has a length uh, greater than one because we're coercing this into a Boolean. And if not, then we return the separate message. But if we do have posts, then we do this looping methodology where we map over our posts in that array and then return that postcard component that we talked about at the very beginning. Um, so that is the nuts and bolts of making our index page, our home page dynamic. In the next section, we'll talk about how to do that with uh, the post details page. So what we've created in this code sandbox are some common scenarios that you would encounter when trying to create a headless WordPress site. Typically, most blogs or sites have somewhere where we display a list of posts, but then they also have the ability for us to use dynamic routes like we're doing right here to pass in some information and get details on a particular post. And that's what we'll tackle next. So to start that process, let's open up our post page component and see what we have in there. Um, so we're still importing React. We have links from a React router, which are going to be rendered right there. And that's essentially what helps us route uh, using React conventions instead of the browser. Um, and what, what gives us those really quick spa-like transitions. So here we've got that stuff. We're also uh, importing some post page content. We've got a, one component here that we're just going to pass uh, the post data into and then would render this for us. So we've got the post page and then a post page content component that we're passing data into. Then here you can see we're also dealing with a couple of those different states that we talked about in the last section on use query. But right now we're still also getting dummy data from uh, our dummy data folder. And then we're going to actually want to replace that with data from our WordPress site. So let's take a look at that data for a second and see what's on there. So we've got date, we've got title, we've got content, author, name, uh, and then some categories with uh, their names and slugs, okay? So what we're gonna wanna do in this first step We'll open back up our post page component because this is where we're doing our data fetching. And then I will hop back into our graphical uh, IDE Explorer. And so we'll just sort of close these things out and start unchecking these options, which will give us a new query. Um, and then what we can do from here is instead of using posts plural, we'll open up the, the singular post. And then what we'll do also here is we've got ID checked, which is how we're going to get our post and then what we'll want to do is also specify an ID type and for this application we're going to select slug and then what this will allow us to do is pass in a particular slug and just make sure that that's working um, so we'll go ahead and grab this slug for tiled gallery and come back in and just provide that value there and we'll go ahead and add that T so that it matches um, and so when we run this query, it will get us the details for that particular post. In a later step, we'll extract this out, create it into a variable that we can then use and programmatically call every time we transition routes. So we know we want a couple of things on this. Uh, we'll go down here. We'll definitely want the title. We know that. Uh, we said we want the date. 
up here, date. We want the content for sure. Uh, we will also want, let's hop back in here and go to our dummy data. Date, title, content. We got date, title, content, author. So we'll open up that, open up the author node. And then we see we're gonna get their name. And then we're also going to get categories. Okay, so we'll open up the nodes here. We said we wanted uh, the slug and the name of the category, right? So if we run this query, we should get back data for just that one post, the tile gallery post. We've got title, date, content, author with a node, and then categories with a nodes array uh, that has slugs and names for each of the categories that it's in. And so now that we have this query, we know that it's gonna get the data we want. Let's go ahead and copy this to our clipboard hop back into our React application and see what we need to do in this post page component to get things started. So the first thing that we know we'll wanna do is we'll need to do some imports. So we know we need our GQL object to format our GraphQL query, and we're also gonna need the use query hook to make that call. And both of those are gonna come from the Apollo client package. Um, and so from there, what we'll do is we'll come down here and we'll declare a new variable and we'll say, call this get post. Uh, so get post by slug. And we'll set that equal to GQL. And that's gonna be open up some back ticks and we'll go ahead and paste our query in and just sort of reformat that a little bit to make it a little bit more readable, which is always important. And then right now we are passing in that specific, that specific slug, but we'll, we'll make that dynamic in the next step. So I'll go ahead and save that out. Nothing should really change. Um, and then we'll come down here and we'll begin implementing um, our use query pattern. So we'll stub that out and then we'll come back and talk about what we're gonna do with this variable. And so here we're gonna wanna do some destructuring again. So we'll declare a new variable and we'll create new loading, error, and data variables uh, from the, the response we get from use query. And so we'll go ahead and just pass our get post by slug query in there as well for right now. Then we can get rid of these next two lines. And so what we'll do next is work to replace this hard-coded ID with a dynamic variable that we can pass into our GraphQL query so that that query is different each time we hit a new route. So to accomplish that, we'll come back up to our query itself and where we have this hard-coded value in here, we're gonna to want to replace that with dollar sign slug. And so what that sort of tells uh, the GraphQL query is that this is essentially a replacement tag, right? This is a piece where I want to, when this code runs, replace it with a variable that we're gonna get from the query itself and so we'll open some parens behind the query name, and then we'll essentially go ahead and say, all right, this slug is going to be this ID. So we'll do ID with caps and um, an exclamation point. And then down here, we will sort of pass that into our use query hook. So now that we've parameterized that query, we'll come back down here. Uh, this is gonna take an object and then on that object, we're gonna have a variables property that's also gonna be an object. And then we'll say slug, and that's going to be equal to props.match.params.slug. Okay, and what that's essentially doing is we're passing props into uh, this post page component, and those come from the router. Right, and that, that's what's getting passed in up here when we pass in this dynamic URL segment. We're essentially reaching out to the router props and you know, looking for the parameter that matches this slug that we've uh, established in our app.js file, right? Via this, this convention. And then we're using that uh, inside of this configuration object to pass it into React, uh, sorry, into our GraphQL query. So we'll go ahead and just save that out and then what we'll also want to do down here is we'll replace our post found variable. So this instead will be a Boolean. We'll use that and we'll sort of coerce data.post. So basically if there's a post here, if this post found is true, if not, it's not. We're using some co coercion there, type coercion to make that happen. So let's go ahead and save that out and let's hop back into our home page. 
And so one of the things that you can see that might be a little bit different is that now that we're hooked up to a live WordPress site, as we click through these things, we actually experience the loading states uh, from use query because before we were loading all of our data from this, these dummy data files that were all local to the same file. So it wasn't necessarily being queried or having to make a network call to get those items and they were always just available when the application needed them. We're here, we're actually having to do some loading um, and occasionally um, it will show that loading state. But if we come back here and go back into that post again, this is where that in-memory cache comes into play that we created with Apollo and Apollo Client, where it's cached that response. It knows that we've used this data, so we don't have to go and request it from the server again. But if we go down to a new one and we click that, we're gonna see the loading state until it loads. But every sort of subsequent interaction for that user uh, should be a little bit more speedy. That wraps up our crash course on creating a simple headless WordPress app with React and WP GraphQL. Hopefully you learned a little bit about how to do this style of development and some of the pros and cons of implementing these different strategies such as the Apollo provider pattern or the use query hook inside of your React components. Thanks for watching.